this is our chance of being Greg Bohalter, though. Let's try and agree on a US men's national team start in 11. Is it set in stone five months until the World Cup final? So let's let's do it between us. We're all on the screen here. We can all agree. We can all everyone can see our agreeance or disagreeance based on our facial expressions. But are we all going for Matt Turner in goal? Let's start in goal, or are we going for Zach Steffen? Zach oh Steffen. wow! I was watching. I'm going Steffen. Listen, I, and as you were talking there, Nick, about are, are we doing possession still or, or are we not doing possession still? Uh, Luca De La Torre being like oh, yeah. almost oh, a good. permanent fixture now, I think is a very clear indicator. We're still doing possession. And I think the interchangeability of like him and, and Jean-Luc Abusio at times and Kellen Acosta at times as well uh, is Berhalter has a type. Uh, for that position and I think he's found it and so I think we are still doing possession so it's got to be Stefan for me I'll go with that I, I I have been thinking it's going to be Matt Turner um, but I want what Andy says to be right so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with Zach Stefan too okay let's go with Stefan I think he has slightly more experience but I think it would be harsh on Turner and I think the difficulty with those two goalkeepers is that neither is probably going to play that much between now and the World Cup if they Turner's going to be the backup at Arsenal, uh, it seems like. And then Stefan, I don't see Man City really letting him leave on loan. So those guys are going to be relying on League Cup appearances and maybe in Turner's case, playing in the Europa League. Um, so that's a bit worrying for the US that those goalkeepers might be rusty. But I honestly do think it's a flip of a coin. But if we're going with possession, let's agree on Stefan. Okay, back four. Left back, Anthony Robinson. We all agree on that. If he's fit, Walker Zimmerman, one of the centre-backs. I mean, Robinson, the other centre back, if fit, I mean, is he going to make it? I'm, I'm not sure. That's that's uh, just question mark, right? Just saw a video of him putting weight on his foot for the first time, and I couldn't remember. I, I was trying to. Be, I'm not a doctor, you know. Like, is this good or bad? Is this is this earlier or later? I'll tell you what. I, I, I are we agreeing? And Andy mentioned his name, and I know I'm usually the one who. Are we agreeing to not mention John Brooks because I do think he's still the best <laughs> choice, and he could he's going to sign somewhere and yeah. potentially be playing every minute and that's what that's what Burhalter's kind of left it leaning on I just I think he's the best for the job but I'm not I wouldn't pick him right now because I want to be realistic it's it's wide open Andy go I mean I could say Carter Vickers Chris Richards if one of those guys yeah. takes chances and is injury free at the start of the season and playing well then I could easily see one of those guys taking the spot but Andy go ahead yeah I I, I think that in an ideal world it's Chris Richards uh, if he can stay healthy and because the possession uh, being on the ball, he is much more mobile than John Brooks. And so I think perfect world, but he's proven that he can't stay healthy at this point. I think realistically right now, um, and given the, especially as you get into the knockouts, I think the way that you're, they're going to try to play will change. And I do think you go for more of an Aaron Long type alongside Walker Zimmerman because you understand what it's going to be. You're going to have less of the sustained possession uh, that you want to try to have against the likes of a Brazil or a Germany and Argentina teams of that ilk. Um, and so I think it, it ultimately ends up kind of the, the Matt Beasler. John Brooks slash Jeff Cameron, uh, you know, trio that, that rotated in 2014. And also on, on Miles Robinson, I'm not doing the, is he going to make it in time for the World Cup? Th I remember Charlie Davies in 2010 and how everybody got their hopes up. Oh, it's Davies will be back before the World Cup. And Charlie Davies was not back for years until after that. So let's just, let's not even start that one right now. Okay. Um, so Gino Dust right back. I think he's got it locked down there. Mm -hmm. uh, midfield three is pretty easy, I think. Tyler Adams, Weston McKenney, and Eunice Musa uh, mm -hmm. is that three. Well, didn't, that was easy. Um, and then um, up front is difficult, but let's go with the wide players who are playing a 4-3-3. Um, Pulisic on the left, Tim Weyer on the right. And then who's playing up front? That's the big problem, right? Nick? Yeah. yeah. I have a really, really challenging time with this because I look at the guys who aren't being called in and they miss a big chance in World Cup qualifying. And now during these friendlies, is, is Jesus Ferreira getting all of these chances to shine because he's in form or because they really, really want him to take it? I honestly believe that if you were to go on body of work over the past few years, um, that I, I want to see PFOC get another chance. I really do. What he's done at Young Boys, what he does in the Champions League, but his misses in qualifying were just so glaring. And the harsh judgment on Haji Wright, 
uh, from Greg Berhalter. While, again, I think it wasn't as harsh. I think some lines might have been left out of some of the transcriptions. He was just kind of saying, I expected a little bit more from him today. Um, I really do think they want Ferreira or Pepe to take it. And mm. it looks like right now that Ferreira is going to get that chance. So let's hope he gets a lot more savvy or else he's going to be a 22, 23-year-old kid. I, I forget how old he is, trying to make it work as the number nine for the United States men's national team in a World Cup mm. against England. Andy, um, before we jump in, there's a lot of clamoring for Tim Weyer to start as a number yeah, nine. Yeah, I like that too. It's, I, I feel like he's better on the right, though. Some great deliveries and just seems a lot more natural out there. I don't think he's really a natural finisher. I, I'm just going to say my piece. I would start one of Christian Pulisic or Giovanni Reina in a false nine and have them. I just think you have to somehow get your best attacking players on the pitch. And I don't know how Gio, Pulisic and Weyer... I just don't know how it fits because the midfield three for me is set in stone. That is the the heartbeat of this U.S. team. So think about your wild card too, Joe. Your wild card is Brendan Aronson, who is yeah. going to be <laughs> on our TV screens, I think, quite a bit this year. Yeah, and maybe he, he he takes what Eunice Musa's spot, maybe as a more attack minded central midfielder. Oh, I don't think Musa's yeah. coming off the pitch. Yeah. Well, I, I've, I've, I've yeah. got Ar Aronson way above Reina right now for the fact that he plays, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's important, um, and that he can be available. I, uh, it's interesting that, that you're going the no striker route, Joe, because I've kind of been making this argument on on PST for about a month now or so. Anytime that, that we're talking national team, whether it's game coverage or preview or, or just roster talk, it's not there. The player is not there in the pool. There, there is not a player in the U.S. men's national team player pool that's going to do the job that the national team wants right now. And so I think trying to throw somebody out there to do that job is you know it's it's insanity you're you're trying the same thing over and over and you're getting the same result i think ricardo pepe has about two months at the start of the season to come out rested and recovered and just acclimated to life in germany that's tough to do in january go in the middle of of the season arrive into a new team that's fighting relegation all those factors he's got two months i think to come out and show marketed improvement um and being at augsburg and if it's not going to be him i think it's probably ferreira i don't think that burhalter goes full no center forward i think he's the closest thing to it though because he is such a number 10 playing in the number nine role he's not really looking to score as much as he's looking to drop in and play make which i think is great with way up making runs off uh i think you could make a case that that uh reina aronson way up uh, all four of those could really kind of play you know, for periods of a game fluidly off of one another and, and create something maybe, you know, at least interesting. And I think uh, cause some problems for the opposition, at least. Yeah, it, it's difficult. It's it's such a key area, right? But I just feel like for the U.S., they have to get all of those talented players. I mean, Aronson, Reina, Pulisic, Weyer on the pitch pretty much at the same time to to cause problems. And I just don't, there's no natural number nine. And there hasn't been for a long time. A lot of guys have been tried, and I think we saw recently Bill Hart is frustrated by the lack of options or the, the players who haven't been getting minutes with their club teams if they made the big move to Europe like Pepe, and, and that's impacted the US, right? So that centre-back and the forward options are the big issues. Everywhere else, I think they're pretty set defensively in the midfield, looking pretty good. So I'm glad we agreed on most of that starting 11, and I'm sure everybody's going to agree in the comments below. So looking forward to seeing those lineups. Uh, but remember, on Pro Soccer Talk and NBCSports.com, we'll keep you updated with all the latest U.S. news ahead of the World Cup, building up towards those friendlies. And we'll be focusing on how the U.S. players are doing uh, for their club teams. Nick does a wonderful job with the uh, ranking of the player pool and seeing who's hot, who's not. I feel like there's still a bit of change, maybe. And fingers crossed, no more injuries for these key U.S. players between now and November when the tournament starts. Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7 a.m. Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock, where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.